Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope that you are safe and sound. And thank you for finding yourselves here with the CCI for the third session of the After School Club. So if you've been with us from the first session or if you joined us last week, thank you for joining again. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We've got a new fun-filled session in store for you today and if you are joining us for the first time I'm going to tell you about what the CCI is and what the after school club is and then we'll meet our visiting artist for the week and get on with our activity. So today um, we've got 3D modelling with galleries with an artist and student Joseph Losper and I will introduce him shortly. So firstly welcome to the after school club it is of course virtual um, so thank you for being here and um, yeah I hope that you enjoy the session. So what is the CCI in case you don't know I'll just quickly explain the CCI is part of UAL it's a new creative computing institute and it supports interdisciplinary teaching, research and knowledge exchange, all at the intersection of creativity and computational technologies. The Institute works across domains such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, alongside how the contemporary world is being defined through human computer interaction and social platforms. So basically, we are a bunch, we are a bunch of artists and creative technologists and technologists and technicians that work together to provide courses and programs for people that are interested in the intersection between creativity and technology. And we are an institute based in University of the Arts London. What is the CCI After School Club? The CCI is collaborating with artists, technologists and current students to provide an online after school club. And of course, you can expect things like 3D design, like today, creative coding, which we've got coming up in the following weeks, machine learning, artist talks and more. All sessions are aimed at young people, families and beginners with young people being our priority. We were going to run the after school club physically. It was going to be based at the playground, which is our community space in Camberwell. And unfortunately, a pandemic happened. So we are now running this as an online program. It's running every Thursday at 4 p.m. bar one Tuesday, where we've got an extra session for you. And I will give you plenty of notice about that. Um, so, yes, it's running completely virtually and the sessions are one hour long. To keep an eye on future sessions, you can follow us on Eventbrite. All the signups are ready to go right through until the end of June. Um, you can also follow us on YouTube. All of our sessions will be on here as well. They will be recorded um, so you can re-watch them, which is amazing. But also you will be accountable if you do do anything silly, like say anything naughty, which I trust that nobody is going to do. But I can't stress more, please know inappropriate language or foul language. We have got minors in the room and they are our priority. Um, and yes, this is for you. So please enjoy the session. So just a little bit of safeguarding before we get started. So as I've mentioned, we've got a mix of ages in the space. So young people, please be comfortable. This space is for you. And anybody that's not a young person that's joining us, any students or anyone that's heard about the programme, thank you so much for joining us. I really think you're going to get something out of today's session. But please just keep the interests of minors in mind at all times. You can use the comment section to communicate with myself and Joseph. So if you're stuck at any point, if you want to ask any questions, if you need to let us know anything, if you've got any feedback for us, anything like that, pop it in the live comments and we'll be keeping an eye on those throughout. Um, please don't share any personal data as usual. And as I mentioned, the session's been recorded. Um, so it will be available after. And um, yeah, it's a resource for you. I think that that is everything. We Any links that get shared, we'll pop them in the comments and you might have seen things popping up at the bottom of the screen already. So we've got a link to download Blender if you are going to do that today. I'll let Joseph explain more about that. And towards the end of the session, we might start giving you um, some more links in the comments so that you can easily access them. So any communications will be done through the comments and please keep in touch with us. Let us know if you're okay. Let us know if you're enjoying it let us know if you're having any problems. Um, so thank you again to everybody that has joined us today. If you have just joined us, you've not missed too much. We're just about to, about to start the session. Be kind to each other and please be aware that there are minors in the room as usual. 
and most importantly enjoy yourself um Without further ado, let's get started by introducing our wonderful artist today, who is Joseph Losper. So I'm going to let Joseph continue the session. I know that he's got a slide ready to tell you all about himself, and he's got an amazing session planned for you. So thank you, Joseph, for being here. I will hand over to you now. Okay, so hi. Uh, my name is Joseph Losper. Um, before I fully introduce myself, though, um, we are going to be using Blender for the session today. Um, so before we begin, if anyone is interested in actually following along with the tutorial, then just head to blender.org. The link is in the comment section, I believe, um, and just download Blender beforehand. Um, it's not a problem if you don't want to follow along today or <clears throat> If um, if the pace is too quick or if it's too complicated, the session, like Jasmine said, will be recorded, and you're more than welcome to like go back and rewatch it in your own time, sort of go through it at your own pace. Um, but if you would like to follow along, then make sure you download Blender beforehand. <clears throat> so, what is Blender? A Blender is a free open source 3D creation software. Um, it's free, which is absolutely excellent. You don't even have to sign up for an account or anything. It's completely free. Um, it's used for 3D animation, motion graphics, CGI, 2D animation, 3D modeling, sculpting, and rendering. Um, if you have a look on the Blender website, there's actually some really great examples of how the industry uses Blender um, for 3D animation and CGI mainly. Um, they've just added a bunch of new stuff. So sculpting is quite new. Um, so those features aren't quite as developed as software like ZBrush, if you're familiar with ZBrush, um, but they're in development. So hopefully it shouldn't be too long. Um, I personally use it to create things like this. Um, this is an example of organic modeling, which means uh, modeling something that resembles a living organism, something that's natural, as unnatural as this looks. Um, but they all, no matter what you make in Blender, it all kind of follows the same Principles. So you use very basic shapes and sort of build them up and up and up until you create the the thing you're looking for. Um, so for this, I started with a sphere for the head. I used the new sculpt tools to sculpt some ears. And then I added more spheres for the eyeballs, and then I added a procedural hair particle texture, which is a little bit more advanced. But uh, at the end of the session, I'll show you where you can find more information about. Um, the program in general if you're interested in continuing. Um, and things like this. So this is hard surface modeling. Uh, this is much closer to what we'll be doing today. Um, this is creating anything with hard surfaces, so like mm, sculptures and models. Uh, this is actually a, a render of my flat. It looks like this is my living room. Um, but yeah, today's gallery space will look quite similar. So who am I? Um, as I've said, and Jasmine has said, my name is Joseph Losper. I am 21 years old. I am a Libra, born in October. I'm a second year BA Fine Arts student at UAL Chelsea College of Art, and I use technology like Blender and Premiere Pro to help make my artwork. Um, the first image that I showed of the, the purple sort of fuzzy head is taken from my most recent um, artwork. Actually, it's one of my most recent videos. Um, so I, I definitely do use uh, these softwares like daily to create my work. Um, when I'm not making work or doing anything else, I enjoy video games, I'm playing a lot of Animal Crossing recently, Smash Bros, Overwatch, studying Japanese. And uh, in the past week or so, I've become quite addicted to uh, TikTok. So that's sucking all of my time. Um, today's activity, though, uh, we're going to be creating a gallery space. Um, since we can't go to real galleries, we may as well just make our own. Um, it's just going to be a very basic introduction to Blender as a software. I'll show you how to navigate around Blender so it's not as intimidating, it's not so scary. And I'll teach you how to add shapes and to manipulate them to build a room. And then if we've got time at the end, I'll show you how you can change the color of the walls and add some lights so you can start um, like really rendering the final product. So. 
If you have downloaded Blender and if you would like to follow along with the tutorial, um, if you've got Blender already, just open it up. And this is the window that you'll be greeted with right at the start. So this middle box, um, this appears like this only the first time that you open it. It's just uh, what settings do you want to use, but all the settings are fine as they are. So no problem, just save settings. Um, and then you can click anywhere on the screen outside of that box to dismiss it. So this is the default Blender layout. Um, firstly, let's just go over what everything is. So this big box here, this main, um, sorry, this, this main viewport where you can see this cube and camera, um, this is your 3D viewport. This is the where you'll spend most of your time. This is where you actually build things and create things. Um, and then over here on the right up here, we can see the um, layer viewport. So if you've ever used software like Photoshop or um, Illustrator, any of the Adobe products or Procreate on an iPad, anything like that, you'll be familiar with how layers work. So this just creates one layer for every item you add so you can easily keep all your, your projects organized. And then below that, this longer section here is the. This longer section here is the um, properties panel. Um, so all of these icons here will allow you to change different properties of whichever um, item you have selected. So um, we'll go into more of this later when we start using when we start actually using it. But at the moment, just so you know that that's where that is. Um, this bottom portion, um, just here, with all of this timeline, if you've used maybe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, any video editing software or animation software, this will probably look really familiar. Um, it's exactly that. It's just a timeline. So if you want to, um, if you want to make animations in this, or you want to animate a camera, um, this is what you'd use. But we won't be using that today, so you can just ignore that. Um, before we actually start making anything, we need to just do two simple things. The first one is to define the units of the world. So that means this grid that you can see here in the 3D viewport, um, each square represents one unit. But if we want to build a gallery, we want those units to be very accurate so we can control the size of the gallery. So over here in the properties panel where you can see all these icons. If you click on this one here, this is called the scene properties. Um, so this one allows you to set different properties for the 3D scene. And right here is a, thing set, um, a menu that says units. If you click on this little arrow next to it, you'll get more controls. And then you can see here all of the different unit controls. So we want to make sure that our uh, we want to make sure that our units are set to metric and that the unit scale is one. So it should be one by default, but if not, just change it to one. Okay, so that allows us to treat each one of these squares as if it was one metric unit, so one centimeter or one meter. It's really good if you're building buildings, so you can make sure things are accurate. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat that again. I know that was quite a lot and quite fast. So in the properties panel, which is this tall gray one in the bottom right, there is a series of icons in the middle and you wanna click on this one here, the scene properties, and then go over to units, click on this little arrow, set this to metric and make sure this value is one, this unit scale is one. Okay, so after we have set that, the next thing to do is, um, if we're working on a laptop or we're working on any device that doesn't have a number pad next to the keyboard, we want to go to edit, which is up in the top left here, uh, just next to file. So edit, and then go all the way down to preferences right at the bottom. So that's edit and preferences. And then in preferences, we want to go to input, uh, just here, about halfway down. And then in the input screen, we want to 
click on emulate numpad, which is just the top one here. And you'll understand why in a second, I'll show you. Um, so just make sure that, that is ticked and then we can exit out of that. Okay, so now that everything is set up, we can start actually making our gallery. So every new Blender project will begin with a cube and a light, sorry, a light here and a camera here. Um, this is just very basic, um, some very basic objects that Blender might recommend you to use. But we don't need these for our project because we're going to make a gallery. So, and we want to add these in when we need them. So we can just select everything by dragging a selection box. That's just left click and then drag to create the box and then hit the delete key to delete everything. Okay, so that's left click and drag to select everything and then the delete key. And you can see they're gone from our layers panel up here. Okay, so. Okay, so we want to start by adding some shapes. So in Blender, everything that you want to do can be done with buttons or they can be done with keyboard shortcuts. Um, and I'll show you both. So if we want to add anything to our scene, um, in the top left of the 3D viewport, just up here, we can see these buttons that say add, select, view, and object, just up here. So what we want to do is add something. So if you click on add, and then it will give you this long list of all the different things in Blender that you can add. We want to add a mesh, so this top one, and then a plane. So you can see the shape next to them, what they are. There's lots of different things here. Um, Taurus is really useful if you want to make a donut, or cone is really good if you want to make a, a witch's hat, um, or sphere. So this is the sphere that I used to create that first image or cubes, there's lots of different options, but we just want a plane, nice simple plane. So you can see this plane here. Um, so if we want to zoom into our object like I just did here, or if we want to move around in this view, we can see all of our move controls here on the top left of the three, sorry, top right of the 3D viewport. This colorful, gray circle is called a gizmo and this lets us rotate our view so if we just click and drag we can rotate all the way around our object however we want so that's in the top right of the 3d viewport again there's the colorful gizmo it shows you all the axes and we can left click and drag to move around our object just like that and if we want to zoom in, we can see the other controls just below. So we've got the magnifying glass here. If we click and drag down, we can zoom out or we can drag up and zoom in. And then just below that, we can see the hand. If you, if you left click on that and then drag around, you can move your view around like that. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat how I added this plane here as well, just in case. So if you want to add anything to your scene, you can go up to the top left here of the 3D viewport and you can see all of these different buttons. Um, there's the view, select, add an object, and we want to click on add. And then you can see all of these different objects. So we want a mesh and then we want a plane. So if you click that, the plane will be added into the middle of your scene. Okay. So I'll give everyone a minute just to sort of get the hang of how this little gizmo works. This is really important so you can like see your object and you can move around it. Really important if you're working with 3D objects. So just click and drag. Okay. Okay, so what we have now is a plane, but at the moment, this plane is only a 2D object. So it has no thickness. It only has height and width. It has no depth. So obviously, galleries are 3D objects, so we want to create some depth for this plane. So how we do that is in the 
properties panel again. So if we select our plane, make sure that that orange line is all the way around the edge, make sure that's selected. And then if we go over to the properties panel on the right hand side, and we can see all these icons again, we're looking for the blue spanner about halfway down. So if we click on that, this one is called the modifiers panel. And modifiers in Blender allow us to add custom properties to an object. So we want something called the solidify modifier. So again, if we go over to the properties panel in the bottom right, and then about halfway down, we want the blue spanner, which is the modifiers panel. Click on that, and then click on add modifier at the top, just here. And then we can see this big long list of all the different modifiers in Blender. Um, the modifiers in Blender are really, um, really versatile. You can use these for so many different things. I usually only use a couple of these. There's lots of these that I've never used. But the one that we're looking for is called Solidify. And it's in this second column about three quarters of the way down called Solidify just here. It has a little picture of a cube next to it. OK, so again, we've got the Modifiers panel, Add Modifier, uh, about three quarters of the way down the second column, Solidify here. So if we click on that one, it's now added solidity to our object. It's now added some depth, so it's no longer just a 2D object. And we can see now that this modifier has been added. We can see all of these different controls for it here. And we're looking for this one just here that says thickness. And we can see that our uh, our pane, our um, plane, sorry, is 0 0.01 meters so far, which is one millimeter, uh, which is obviously far too thin for a gallery wall. So if we click this here, we can then change this number um, to, uh, let's say, uh, 0 0.1, so 10 centimeters. So good thickness for a wall, I think. Um, so there's lots of different options here, but the only one that we're really interested in at the moment is this thickness one here. So if we change that to 0 0.1, and then we can see that our, um, our plane in the 3D viewport here has now got some thickness to it. Okay. So we now have a plane that is 10 centimeters thick, and we don't know how wide or how long the plane is yet. And that's because we haven't opened our, um, I think it's called the tools panel. So if your mouse is anywhere in this 3D viewport, if we press N on our keyboards, that's N, it opens this menu here and we can see all of the different um, all the different attributes of our um, object. And at the bottom here, we've got dimensions. So we can see along the X axis. Um, sorry, just to repeat that, we've got, um, if your mouse is in this 3D viewport, you press N on your computer, N for number, not M for mother, um, N for number, and it'll open all of the, um, open the attributes panel here. So we can see that the, this wall so far is two meters long and two meters wide and 10 centimeters thick. So we we did, uh, we did this one just now with the modifier panel, but two meters by two meters is just the default size for a plane. So we can click on this left click and then change how large this wall is. So maybe we want the wall to be uh, 10 meters, 10 meters long, and maybe three meters high. So that's 10 meters in this X dimension here. Sorry, let me zoom in. So just here in the dimensions panel, we want the X value to be 10 meters, the Y value to be three meters, and then this Z value is 0 0.1, which we did earlier with the modifier. Okay, so now, we can see our wall is nice and long, seems to have a good height and good thickness, but it's completely the wrong orientation. This wall is laying on the floor, which is not good, not how we want this to be. So we should rotate the wall. So if we select our 
wall um, make sure that the orange is all the way around um, so just in case you've accidentally clicked out of it there'll be no orange so left click to select the object and then we can see all of these tools here over on the left hand side of the 3d viewport all of these here so these are all the different transform tools so transform just means move so this top one here is the just normal mouse button this allows you to draw selection boxes like this, like we did to delete everything in the beginning. Uh, this next one allows you to move the 3D cursor, which we don't need to use. And then the next three are the ones that we're most interested in. So this one with the arrows is the move tool. If we press this, select our object, we can then move this object. So you can see it's added these three uh, colored arrows. And these arrows correspond to the 3D gizmo up here. So you can see this yellow, sorry, this green one is for the Y axis here. So we've got these, these tools here on the left. Um, we've just selected this move tool, selected our object, and then it's come, it's shown us this uh, movement tool in the, uh, in the middle. So this green one is green, is the same green as the uh, gizmo, sorry, for the Y axis. The blue one is the same as the Z axis and the red one is the same as the X axis. So if we click and drag on any of these, it will move our object, but only on that axis. So we don't have to worry about moving things inaccurately. We can move things only in the direction that we want to. The next tool is the rotate tool this is the one that we're going to be using um, so if you click on that you'll see that this control gizmo in the middle has changed so now you can see this red one will rotate the object along the x-axis like this like this um, and then the same for the other two the yellow one will rotate along the y-axis and the blue one along the z-axis the next um, tool is the scale tool. We won't use that in this session, but just so you know where it is, it's quite useful. This allows you to make the object bigger or smaller. So you can just drag out like this and it'll make your object bigger and smaller. This is really good for a lot of 3D modeling, but um, it's not very accurate if you're doing um, like architecture or you're building something that needs to be very precise. So I generally don't use that very much. OK, so we want to be using the Rotate tool again. So this middle one here, we want to select this, make sure our object is selected. And then we want to make it so this wall is standing up. So we want to rotate it along the x axis here. So just grab that red one and pull that around. While you have your uh, mouse like clicked, once you've, you're holding the left mouse button, you can type in a number and it will lock the object to that rotation. So we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So I've clicked, I'm holding down the left mouse button and then I want to type nine and zero and then enter to apply that. And we can see that it's moved, uh, it's rotated exactly 90 degrees. So it's very accurate. I'm just using the gizmo in the top right here to look around. OK, so I'll do that one more time. Um, so we want the Rotate tool again, which is the uh, middle tool here on the top left. So it's this one here with the two arrows rotating around a diamond. We want to click that one first and then make sure the object is selected. And then we can see this uh, control gizmo in the middle. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees along the x axis. So we can see the x axis here is the red one. So we want to click and hold with our left mouse button um, or sorry, just on your trackpad, just click. And then while you're still holding, we want to type nine zero and enter to rotate that 90 degrees exactly. OK, perfect. So we now have the first wall. Only one, though. Most galleries have more than one. Um, we're going to build a very simple gallery today, so only four walls. But luckily, once you've made one wall, the other three are super, super easy. 
At the moment, though, we can see our wall kind of cuts through our grid, um, which isn't a problem, but it's a little bit messy to look at. So we can use the move tool that we just had a look at to just lift the whole wall above the grid. So again, the move tool, oh, the move tool is over here on the left-hand side of the 3D viewport, the one just above the rotate tool, the one with the four arrows. If we click this and then we make sure our object is selected, we can then just grab this up arrow here, this Z axis arrow, and then just drag it above the grid. We don't need to be really precise with this because we just want the grid out of the way. Okay, and then again, so we can click this move tool here, click on that, make sure the object is selected, and then we want to grab on this Z arrow and just drag it up here, just like that. Okay. Okay, so now we have one perfect wall. So to make the other three very, very simple, all we do here is we select the object with the left click, and then we, we use a keyboard shortcut for this one. So on your keyboard, if you are using Windows, you can click, oh no, it's the same for Windows and Mac, sorry. Um, it's Shift and D. Just click that, and then you've got a new wall just right here. And this new wall is um, assigned to wherever your mouse is. So we want to make sure that this is on the same axis, the same level as the other wall. So I'll just repeat that again, sorry. So we've got the, we want to duplicate this wall. Okay, so the shift key, uh, we're going to be using shift D. So the shift key is, um, there's usually two on your keyboard. The one that I'm using is the one on the left, just under the caps key, the capitals key. Um, it's a key that has a upwards arrow on it. Um, sometimes it might say shift, depending on your computer. So we want to select the object and then hit shift D. And then before we actually move the wall, now we can lock the new wall to a certain axis. So we want to press Y on our keyboard. So that locks it to the Y axis. So you can see that new green line that just appeared. And then if we move the wall, it will be locked to that axis. So we know it's in line with the first wall. And then we can just left click to place that. OK. So I'm just going to do that one more time. So if we select our wall and then Shift D, press Y to lock that to the Y axis, and then pull that back just anywhere, and then press left click to stop. OK. Now, we want to create two more walls. So do exactly the same thing. Select the object, Shift D, pull that back. Sorry, select our object, Shift D, and then Y to lock that to the Y axis, pull it back, left click. And then one more time, so we have four walls, four even, even walls. Um, select, Shift D, Y, and then pull. OK, perfect. Now we have four nice walls. Now this would be fine if we were making maybe a supermarket that has lots of aisles, but we want two of the walls to be rotated. So the same as we did earlier, we want to select a wall and then go over to the left-hand side where we can see our transform tools. Click on Rotate and then rotate the, uh, the wall 90 degrees. So we want this. We want this around the z-axis. We can see that um, the z-axis is the one that goes from top to bottom. So we rotate around that one. So left click. And then again, while we're holding our left click button, we can tap 9, 0, and Enter. And then that will lock that to 90 degrees exactly. OK, and then we want to do the same with one more wall. So select the other wall. Rotate and then left click and drag along the Z axis and then 9, 0, enter. Now we have a very messy four walls. So we want to move two of these walls now. So earlier um, we went up to edit preferences and we did the emulate numpad. So the reason we did that now is so that we can 
use 2D views to make sure that all of our objects line up correctly. So if we press seven on our number pad, on our, sorry, number row, just above all the letters on our keyboard, we can see our project from the top down. So we can see how well things line up. Obviously they don't line up at the moment, but that's what we're going to do now. So with a wall selected, we want to cl uh, click the move tool again over here on the left. And then we just want to use these arrows to make sure this is in line with another wall here. And don't forget you can use your zoom key and your, your hands just here around this navigation gizmo. So we can make sure that these all line up really tightly. So it's on here. Mm -hmm. So if you're moving something and it's moving too quickly and it's very difficult to line up, if you hold down that same shift key, it will move it much slower so you can have, you have much more control. We just want to line all of these walls up using the same process. There we go. So that's two. And then select this wall, go over to the move tool and then just use these arrows again. And then I can hold down that shift key to move things much slower. Okay, and then the final wall here, again, select the wall, move tool, and then just put this in place here. Okay. So now we have a beautiful looking square, but if we go back to our normal view, um, which we can do by using this gizmo, sorry, this um, axis gizmo. So at the top, you've got the, the different colored axes. Just click on that so we can change. So we can change the view and we can see our walls all lined up here. So I'll leave it a couple of minutes. So if anyone, needs some more time to do that. I know I went through that quite quickly, but um, don't forget that if you have any questions, if I've gone over anything too quickly, you can just pop them in the comments and I'll answer them for you. So at the moment, what we've done is we've added our walls, we've added some thickness to the walls, and we've rotated them and copied them so we can create four equal walls, and we've moved them all and arranged them into a room shape. So all of your moving tools are over here in the top left of the 3D viewport. Um, we can see the move tool here, the rotate tool just below it, um, yeah, we only need those two, but they're over here on the left. And then if you want to move around your scene, if you want to zoom in and see stuff, um, you can do that with all these controls here. So this is your, your gizmo for rotating around your object like this. Just left click and drag. Below that, we've got the zoom, so left click and drag, and the pan tool, so we can pan around like this. Okay. We'll leave that for another minute if anyone needs some more time. Okay, great. So the next step is to add some floor so that our guests don't fall into space when they visit our gallery. So the same process as before, the first thing that we did, so we want to go up here to the top left where we can see this view, select, add an object just up here. And we want to add mesh and plane again. So the same the same as adding a wall, it's exactly the same. Um, so this will add an object where our 3D cursor is. The 3D cursor is the, that um, this circle, this, it's like a dotted circle with a cross in the middle. 
So every time you add a new object, it will always be added where that cursor is. So we want to move that into the middle. So just move tool again on the left. Um, OK, so we've got a question, sorry. So how do you stop it from moving from the same level so they're all stood from the same floor? Ah, I see. So once you duplicate the wall, before you move the wall, you can um, select which axis the wall then moves on. So I use the Y axis. So let me actually just demonstrate this. Um, So, for example, you have a wall here, like this, um, and then when we duplicate it, so we hit Shift and D, before you start moving it with your mouse, you can, or it's fine if you are moving it with your mouse, as, as long as you haven't uh, left-clicked yet, um, you can select which axis to move it along. So if we hit Y, we can see that green line, and then if we move it, it will be directly in line with the first wall it will only move along that one axis. So if you do that when you are duplicating your walls, you make sure that all of the walls are the same height, that nothing is moving along the z-axis or the x-axis, it's only moving along the y. So that's how. Um, but if you haven't done that, that's it's also very easy to fix. After we add the floor, um, it's very easy to then move the walls just on top of the floor. So I'll explain that as well when we get to that bit. OK, so just I hope that answers your question. If not, um, I think this next part should. So again, we want to add our floor, just to reiterate that again. So we want to go up to the top left and hit Add, and then Mesh, and then Plane. And then we want to move this plane into the middle of the gallery. So hit the Move tool here on the left, and then just drag that into the middle. OK, um, so now that that's in the middle, we can obviously see that that's too small. So if we hit 7 on our numbers, again, we can see that top-down view, much easier to align things. And we need to make this square fill all of this space here. So if our walls are 10 meters long, that means that the inside of this um, gallery space will be 10 meters wide and 10 meters long. So in this uh, properties, sorry, this attributes item panel thing again that we, we opened earlier with N for number on our keyboard, we can see the dimensions of the floor just here at the bottom. And we can see that X is two, Y is two, and Z is nothing because we haven't added that thickness, but that's not a problem for this. Uh, we don't need any thickness to the floor. Um, so we need this X value, this red one, this width, um, and the Y value, this green one, this height, uh, we need both of those to be 10. So make sure that your plane is selected. So make sure that there's this orange box around it. If you've clicked out, just left click on the shape. And then in this dimensions panel, we want to change the X to 10 and the Y to 10 also. OK. Um, and then with the Move tool, again, make sure that the floor is selected, hit the Move tool, and then just line that up nicely with the inside of the gallery. Um, we can use that Shift key again to move things nice and slowly. And then it should just look like a big white square. So if you rotate, you can see we now have a floor that lines up from the top, but as we just saw, it doesn't line up at the bottom. There's a big space at the bottom. So we can press three on our numbers instead, and then we can use the, the same 2D view, but it's from the side. Now, if we want, I'm just gonna repeat that actually, sorry. So we added the plane and we changed the dimensions to X 10, and Y10 as well, makes it the correct size. And then we line it up 
by using seven on our number pad to see a top-down view. Make sure that lines up with the move tool. And then if we press three, our plane is selected here. We can see that it's selected in the layer panel just here. And then we wanna just bring that up as well. So select this and bring that up just to close that space. And there we go. We have a gallery space with a floor. Just like that. So there's much more that we can do with this. Obviously, we could change the colors. We could we could add lights. We can add doors, windows, lots of different stuff. Um, but just wanted to hopefully make Blender seem a little less scary for anyone who doesn't use this anymore. Um, who doesn't use this? Sorry, um, it's not very. It shouldn't be as intimidating as it is, and there's lots of places online for you to find uh, more information, more resources, if you're interested in continuing to learn this. This has just been a really basic introduction, just showing you how to add objects, how to move objects and rotate them, how to add the solidify modifier, and how to use these different views, this top down and this side view to line things up. So. Hopefully you've got a gallery space that looks quite similar to this at the moment. Um, and that's that's all we've got time for, really, for the activity. Um, I would like to go back to this slide, though, and just recommend some things to anyone who's interested in Blender, anyone who has enjoyed the session. Um, there's a few YouTube channels that are really, really great for learning new things about Blender, learning how to make things, learning how to like change new things. Um, this, this top one, this first one, Blender Guru, is my personal favorite. He is an Australian man called Andrew, and he has a really great like short course on his YouTube channel that shows you how to make a donut and how to make coffee, and through doing those, um, uh, through doing those courses, you sort of get to understand a lot of the basic functions of Blender. So it's definitely worth looking at if you're interested in 3D modeling. Um, and then the actual Blender YouTube channel, surprisingly, is really, really great. They have lots of very short videos just explaining certain aspects of the program. Um, and then there's two more here, CG Geek and Daniel Craft, both really fantastic um youtubers that um share lots of really great knowledge for free um so yeah blender blender is a really great software for the fact that it's free um lots of people um use blender to get started in 3d in the 3d industry um lots of 3d animation studios uh, don't use Blender. They have either their own software or they use um, other software like ZBrush maybe or Maya or um, Cinema 4D is another really popular one. Um, but a lot of the functions are very similar. So learning how to do all of those things in Blender first is really valuable, I think, um, because then you just have to learn how to use the new software. You don't have to learn how to 3D model all over again. Um, so anyone that's interested in 3D modeling or um, 3D animation, Blender is a really, really good place to start. Um, it's a really great community of people like all these people, these YouTubers. Um, there's so much information available online that's all free. Um, so you you really can like learn a lot for nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, there's lots of great courses on Udemy and Skillshare and Patreon, but um, YouTube is free, so why not? Um, yeah, I really hope everyone has enjoyed the session. I really hope um, everyone was able to learn something and take something from it. And I hope that you've all managed to make a, a little gallery space. Feel free to continue with it after if you want to keep exploring Blender, try and add a roof or make smaller rooms inside the gallery. Maybe there's an office. 
some homework. But yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And thank you for your questions. Um, next week's session will be a basic guide to talking to your computer, um, which, yeah, really interesting. I'm going to go to that one. Um, the, there's a link just here at the top. This is for the CCI's website if you're interested in the CCI and what they do. And yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to hand over again back to Jasmine. So thank you. Yeah, and a big thank you to you as well, Joseph. Um, you. Hopefully, I'm not being presumptive here, but I feel like that was really clear. Um, you went at a lovely pace. Um, and as we've been reminding you throughout, if you weren't able to follow along with Joseph's tutorial there, this resource will be available for you afterwards. And you could have been pausing and rewinding during the session as well. So hopefully, if you didn't manage today, you will be able to build your gallery space at home and if anyone was joining along today live well done and um, because I can imagine that you've got something that looks like what Joseph intended on your screen right now and if you do another massive well done to you for getting your head around an industry level piece of software um, and as we said it's amazing and it's free um, and it's not showing any signs of not being free anytime soon so use mm -hmm. it um, it's it's fantastic that we're able to use things like this um, as creatives and as technologists. So a massive thank you to Joseph for giving us such a friendly introduction to what can be quite a complex piece of software. So thank you very much, Joseph. Um, we've got a few comments coming in saying that it was really helpful and a few thank yous. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just going to close the session now um, by saying thank you to all of you that have participated. We are finishing slightly early, but better early than late. Um, I will let you enjoy your evenings. I'll just leave by saying, um, Joseph's already kindly introduced the next session. We're going to pop the link in the comments for you in a moment. So if you haven't already, please sign up for next week. Same place, same time, Thursday at 4 p.m. And we have got basic guide to speaking to your computer. So we're going to touch on coding principles and coding mind frames that you can get yourself into and get yourself ready to code and ready to learn. Again, in what we hope is a simple, friendly and easy to understand way that's suitable for young people and beginners. So please join us next week. And if you would like to email us a picture of your gallery, and if you're feeling extra supportive, a little bit of feedback about the session, what you enjoyed, what we could do differently, how you're finding the program, if you've been joining us um, throughout the sessions, please do email it to, um, I think it's CCI at arts.ac.uk, but we're going to pop it. Yep, it is. It's in the comments now. Thank you, CCI. Um, so yeah, please do send us screenshots of your gallery and let us know how you found the session, what you think, want to see more of. Um, let us know how amazing Joseph was because I really do think he was amazing. Thank you so much, Joseph. Um, and as always, subscribe to us to keep up to date with what we're doing. Spread the word. This is a fantastic resource and we're really happy to be able to bring it to you. So thank you again to Joseph. Thank you again to everybody that turned up, whether you followed along or didn't. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next week. Please enjoy the cloudy evening. Thank you.